gather as a community of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, as we gather around the table of the Lord on this feast of St. Andrew the Apostle, on this day of remembering uh, Andres Bonifacio, let us allow ourselves to be humble before the Lord and ask the Lord to show us His mercy and kindness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to the fullness of life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on, and on earth, earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, 
who has believed what was heard from us? Thus, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes to the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your, spirit, your words, Lord, are spirit and life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two, of two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospels tell us very little about the lives of the Apostles. Saint Andrew is no exception. On his feast day, I would like to recall three instances when Andrew was mentioned in the Gospel of John. First, in John chapter 1, 35 to 42, we are told that Andrew was first a disciple of John the Baptist. But when John pointed to Jesus, Andrew and another disciple became curious about him, and they followed him where he stayed. After spending the day with Jesus, Andrew looked for his brother Simon and told him that he found the Messiah. And he brought his brother to Jesus. Second, in John chapter 6, 1 to 15, the story of the feeding of the 5,000. It was Andrew who brought to Jesus' attention the boy who had five barley loaves and two fish. Third, in John chapter 12, 20 to 26, we are told that after Jesus' triumphal entry to Jerusalem, some Greeks approached Philip and expressed their desire to see Jesus. And as the story tells us, Philip did not go directly to Jesus. He went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. What can we mine from this uh, few stories? I think in all three stories, we see that Andrew is someone who brings people closer to Jesus. First, his own brother Simon, then the boy who brought bread and fish, 
and then the Greeks who wanted to see Jesus. Who have been like Andrew to you? And to whom have you been an Andrew? Another impression I get of Andrew in the stories from the Gospel of John is that he seems to have a gift of friendship. He likes to be around people, and perhaps people probably also like to be around him. Also, he has the eye to see the gifts of others around him. Moreover, he is able to connect people, to establish network, to close in gap that separates one group from another. All of this capacity for friendship may appear to be simply a unique gift of his personality or character, but one can also look at them as evangelical. That is a way of sharing in Jesus' mission of proclaiming that the kingdom of God is at hand. In some gospel stories, we find that some of Jesus' own disciples would drive people away from Jesus, such as the little children or the pesky blind man. In Andrew, we find a disciple who finds joy in bringing people nearer to Jesus. In another instance, some of Jesus' own disciples were complaining that others who were not in their group were also using Jesus' name to heal and to cast out demons. Perhaps a big part of it driven by envy and competition. But in Andrew, we see someone who has the eye to see and to seek out, to take delight and to appreciate the good gifts of others. Like the boy with the bread and the fish. For someone who seems to be very affable and charismatic, Andrew could have used all of it to make himself popular and the center of attention. To declare himself as a teacher and gather around him his own disciples, his own students, but Andrew seemed to have learned so well from his first teacher, John the Baptist, who pointed away from himself in order to be able to point toward Jesus and proclaim, look, there is the Lamb of God. Like Saint Andrew, let us pray that our gift for friendship may not only bring about smooth interpersonal relationships among us, but it may be a source of strength and courage to work against forces that keep us away from one another and turn against our shared humanity. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father who reveals the mysteries of the kingdom to the childlike and is close to the humble and the poor. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who exercise authority in the church and in the government be filled with the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, that in deciding our right, peace and justice may reign in our land, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May we realize and appreciate the gift of faith in Christ, that reveals to us the mysteries of the heavenly kingdom that prophets and kings long to see and to hear, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. May we bring the children to the knowledge and love of the Lord to our teaching and good example, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May this Advent season make us persevering in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May we abstain from what we do not really need and be generous, especially towards the poor and the needy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating their birthdays, especially Benjamin T., Sandy Santos, Danilo Navarro, Sandra Ramos Padilla, 
Ling Kisimbing Ramilo, Janice Kirol Mokon, Kiko Angeles, Mawen Ong, and Cesar Villanueva, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of Manny and Marivic Pecho and Ed Natura, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of our beloved dead, especially those whose names were sent to Jescom and Radio Katipunan to be prayed for during the month of November, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Rio Carla Pineda, Paul William Uyen family, Melva Valdez, Georgie Puno and family, Lori Lee Tenorio and family, Rafael Miguel and Danilo Miguel, Eds Henuino, Thomas Lorenzo and family, Ramonito and Marites Veloso for their 27th wedding anniversary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we give you praise for your gracious will towards us. May we listen to the words of your Son and put them into practice in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, friends, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds, to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer one another the sign of God's peace. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed Apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the Holy Apostle Andrew. Amen. Amen. May he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the, inter the eternal homeland, for by their teaching, you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.